<clears throat> Do we have all the town board members present? I... I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Linda's here. Gary's. Yeah. Okay. All right, then we can get started. Um, good evening, everyone. I'm Kathy Manicotts. I'm town board supervisor. I'd like to call to order the town board meeting of December 21st, 2020. If we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by town councilman Jared Simpson. I pledge allegiance to, to the, flag the flag of the United, United States, States of America, of America and, to the and to the Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, nation, nation under, under God, God indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Jane, if you could please call the roll. You're muted, Jean. Unmute, there we go. Councilman Gary Davis. Present. Councilwoman Linda Dorzak. Present. Councilman Terry Fennelly. Present. Supervisor Kathy Menicott. Present. Councilman Jared Simpson. Present. Thank you, Jean. You're welcome. And if you just give me one moment, I would like to pull up So um, if we could, before we proceed, I'd like to um, confirm, Jean, if you could confirm that the meeting was properly advertised. Yes, it was. Um, we also have written communications available. Um, attachment one to the agenda um, for everyone's review. Please review those at your convenience. Um, if you're not speaking, I would just ask if you could mute yourself. That would be very helpful. Thank you. Um, before we go any further, I'd like to also bring your attention to the birthdays that are coming up for our town employees. For the December 21st to January 10th time period, we have December 22nd, Troy Bennett. Also on that date, Mark Scott. December 26th, Sarah Linda Hooker. December 28th, Wayne Bellis. December 29th, Justice David Prowl and January 7th, John Robertella. Happy birthday to everyone. Okay, at this point, we have our first privilege of the floor, if anyone would like to be heard. And if you could, I can't see everyone at once. So if you could just speak up and say you'd like to be heard, that'd be helpful. Okay, I don't hear or see anyone at this point. Um, at this point, we have priority business appointments. Um, there are town supervisor appointments. Um, at this time, the town historian will not be filled. The town history team would like to conduct um, interviews and meet in January to give their recommendations, and I'm more than happy to do that. Um, the town dep deputy supervisor will be announced at our next meeting as well. Um, Pursuant to town law section 103.2, the, the, I do hereby designate Doug Finch, town manager as the budget officer for the town of Canandaigua for a term expiring on December 31st, 2021. And thank you to Doug for being willing to take that appointment. Um, Jean, you have town clerk appointments. Would you like to mention those or shall I? Um, nope, that's okay. Um, I continue to have Lisa Record as my deputy town clerk and deputy registrar of vital statistics. Yeah. And Rebecca Doyle as my second deputy town clerk. Okay. Jim, you have um, an appointment? Yes, we will continue with Chris Litz for 2021. You've been doing a great job for myself, the town. All right, and thank you to all of those people for also being willing to take those very important roles and for doing the great jobs that you've been doing in them. Next, we have priority business, a planned unit development, possible development on New York State Route 332, ZBART. Doug, did you wanna give a presentation on that? Yeah, Kathy, and I'll keep it short. Just um, before we do that though, I, I think I can see everybody on the screen. 
Uh, just try to get our attention if you want to speak. I've also got a chat window open so that if you if you do want to speak, we've got a lot of people on the uh, on the meeting tonight. Just send us a, a note through the chat box too. We'll get your attention one way or the other. There are some uh, calls uh, on the meeting this evening also, and uh, I'll try to monitor those. Some of those uh, we've muted just because of some noise, but uh, we'll try to um, facilitate those as much as possible. Um, this uh, the, the the question that I have. The reason why I put this on the agenda for you this evening. Um, without going into a, a ton of detail, let me just kind of flip over here to uh, Encore. The ZBART is currently located in the town of Canandaigua on New York State Route 332. And uh, they're, they're actually right up in here. And they actually have recently proposed a sketch plan to the town of Canandaigua to construct a new facility on this property here that's at the intersection of Campus Drive, County Road 8, 332. Uh, this would be the golf course back in here, the townhomes, Thomas Road here. What, what's recently come up during the conversation as we've started having conversations with the developer is the idea that in 1986, the town board passed a law for this property, all of these properties in this whole big block to be zoned what's called a planned unit development, a PUD. And the 1986 law was very specific. It detailed setbacks and, and a whole variety of things. Obviously, fast forward to 2020, 40 years later, right? We have a uptown study. We have a lot of other things that that 1986 law doesn't necessarily support. There, there's some conflicts between that 1986 law and our more recent uptown study. All I really kind of need from the town board at this point is just a thumbs up, essentially. I'd like to encourage the developer to design something that's a little more in keeping with the uptown study than the specific 1986 law with the idea that we would ask the town board to go back and revisit the plans once they were to submit a plan that's more in keeping with the uptown law and revisit that 1986 law and possibly making some adjustments um, to that law. Accordingly. So that's kind of, uh, that's the whole reason for putting it on here. I just want to know that the town board is receptive to that. So. Sounds reasonable to me, Doug. Yeah. Yes, it does. Okay. And that's it for that, Kathy, then. All right. Next, we have, do we have any presentations? Doesn't look like we do. Okay. Um, public hearings. Okay, our first public hearing is on a text code amendment to town code chapter 220 that regulates the use of short term rental units. We have a motion to open this hearing. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, would anyone like to be heard on this? And we're going to take a minute to make sure we get everyone. And we also had some um, emails and letters on this as well, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Maybe we should mention. Okay, I don't think we have anyone. And thank you, Mr. Yarger, for letting me know you're, you're not. I'm trying to keep track of the chat, but if I don't. Uh Nancy, oh, Nancy yeah. Somebody has a question. So, a um, couple things. So, I'm in real estate, and I've been um, just learning a lot about zoning and stuff like that. And I just have a question to pose to the town: How do you differentiate between a long-term renter and a short-term renter if they're both in a single-family um, classification? How can you? Um, say something to a short-term rental landlord versus someone that does long-term rental. They're both making money and they have different kinds of people living there. So I'll answer part of it and then others can jump in. So um, our concern with short-term rentals, um, when there's a long-term rental, Presumably the person who's renting knows who they're renting from. There's a person there that we can contact if there's a problem. Um, with short-term rentals, um, sometimes the owners are not don't live here, um, which could be true for a long-term rental as well, but there's more consistency. So if there's a problem, we've had problems, for example, with a septic system failing and not being able to locate the owner 
to correct that situation. So with this law, we would have contact information um, and be able to do that. So that's part of the reason. Okay, so when I, I read over the email from some gentleman in Farmington, and I'm not sure he owns on the lake, does he? I'm not sure which. Mr. Finch, you got the um, email, like December 1st or something, or December 14th. It was a man from Farmington. Well, if you could tell us what his concern was, maybe we can just answer well, that. Well, he, he was just, just in favor of it. But when I've been to zoning meetings elsewhere, sometimes people don't have standing to complain. And that's what I'm trying to inquire about. Yeah, this, I, in my opinion, and, and Chris, you can chime in, stand, you know, it's not necessarily a standing issue. Everyone in the community who has some interest um, in making sure that our rentals are safe. So um, it's strictly, you know, you don't have to be a neighbor to be um, impacted by this, for example. So in terms of a town board public meeting or public comment, which I think that email to Tom Finch would qualify as, <clears throat> there is no standing required. It is by New York State Open Meetings Law, uh, a requirement for the town to accept any public comment or any public um, written comment or oral comment at the public hearing. Um, the amount of weight given to such comments is left to the discretion of the town board. And um, so if I was to do research on a real estate issue and I really had some trouble reaching somebody, I've actually called you know, the fire department who sometimes keeps track of these kinds of things, more in a commercial sense, maybe than a residential. Um, so I don't know if you know, that's something that the town might wanna I don't know who takes care of the fire. Is that town that's Middle Cheshire would be mine? I guess, you know, with regard to this public hearing, um, you know, we're looking to be, to, you know, give input on that. So I'm, I'm not really sure where you're, what your question. Well, I'm just, I, again, I, I know from all different parts of the United States, I know that they're trying to get um, some um, governments are trying to get um, people to, you know, tell the government who's the owner, what's their contact information, and stuff like that. So I know it's happening around the United States, but I just, again, from a fairness standpoint, I just don't understand, even though I heard what you said, and I might understand some things, I think that someone that's renting long-term or short-term, if you're going to make one do something in one cl zoning classification, then you should also make the other um, landlord also report. And that long-term person can still have a septic tank issue. So that's why I'm just, I know that I haven't studied around the United States about, you know, the difference between a, sh actually in one, in one part of the Northeast, I did see that it depends on how long you're renting and that's how they classify how you report to the government. But I'm not sure what your rules are. But I just wanna be fair from one landlord to another in a residential district. That's what I'm trying to tell the town. And I don't, I'm not here to basically say, you know, I'm just basically saying, let's be fair from okay. a woman's perspective and that you shouldn't delineate on, again, the type of renter that you have, but because the issue was given, let's say it's a septic tank. Now, septic tanks don't really hurt other, maybe they do hurt other houses, but in a, in a fire could definitely go from one house to another. So I can see why the town fire chief may want that contact information. So again, right. I'm not making a complaint. I just not happy about how you are maybe putting the burden on reporting to the government from one type of residential 
organization just depending on who they're renting okay. from. <laughs> well, I appreciate your input. Um, as you know, as Kathy? I know, yep. Uh, yes. Uh, I would like to say that, you know, the ordinance committee spent a lot of time on this, plus the other committees and things within the town to come up with something that was going to be beneficial, both for the town, the staff and the citizens. And uh, other uh, communities in the area are also doing it because I noticed in the paper within the last week that uh, South Bristol is in the same uh, having a hearing on the, the uh, short term rentals for their community. So uh, this is something we, uh, you know, tried to uh, make that it was going to be fair for everybody concerned in the, in the way we uh, drafted up this uh, code. Okay, thank you. Um, would anyone else like? I, let, let me just say that Airbnb is trying to get a federal, uh, someone to work on a federal level. So what we're talking about is, you know, there's, there you have to have equal treatment I think in the type of zoning. So I know that, and it kind of is like this domino effect on the government trying to, again, some governments, like you can say Canandaigua has one rule, town of Canandaigua has something else and South Bristol might come up with something else or you might all look at each other. But I'm not, me, I'm a broker in many different states and I look at things all over the country. We've had our attorney look into the legalities of this and we're, you know, we're confident that, you know, but who knows, anyone can always challenge anything on those, in those regards. So, but thank you for your comment. Um, anyone else? Okay, I don't see anyone else with a comment. Um, no one else sees anything. Okay, um, can I have a motion to close this hearing? All moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Um, next, we have a public hearing on exercising option to purchase land on Canandaigua Lake. Um, we're going to, if I could have a motion to open this hearing. So All moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And just so everyone knows, we'll open this hearing. We'll start with public comment and we intend to continue this hearing until January 11th. Is that correct, Doug? This was the, okay. So would anyone like to be heard on this? Greg Westbrook would. Okay, Greg. I see we also have a couple other people. Okay, I'll make it short. <clears throat> so Jim Holden hit a generational defining moment back in 1989 as he led the town to acquire Camp Ananda from the YWCA. The town opened the park in 1990 and the rest is history. Today, the town board has a very similar opportunity to acquire over 900 feet of frontage on Canandaigua Lake. That opportunity only comes once a generation. When these acquisitions, two of them, proposed are completed in 2021, we will have another generational defining moment for the town of Canandaigua. Our publicly owned lakefront will measure nearly a third of a mile of lakefront on Canandaigua Lake for all the citizens of the town of Canandaigua and beyond to enjoy. And after looking back at 2020 and what a year it has been, this would be a great, great movement forward as we prepare this opportunity on behalf of the board. I want to offer my full support and engagement in the process. Thank you. Thank you, Greg. Um, Michael Yarger, I think you. Are you muted? I might have just been saying yay, that he's excited. Oh. I don't know if that was I think a that's yay. a yay. Yeah, that's oh, so yeah, that was, okay. he was cheering. <laughs> okay. Um, Kathy, I'd like to say something. It's Karen Parkhurst. Okay, Karen. Um, I agree with Greg 100%. Uh, I've lived in the town for fi um, going on 50 years. And uh, as a town resident, I think it behooves us to have more capability to uh, appreciate the lake where we don't because most of it is is private land at this point 
So I've looked at the tax map of the Tishner Point project, and that that is an amazing piece of land. The the other one I think would have some. We we're going to have some difficulty in um, creating a park there, but I think it can be done. The one by um, German Brothers doesn't matter. Both of those pieces of property would be amazing to have as park area for the town of Canandaigua. And it's something that we can use. It's something that's way, way overdue for, for our town. And I highly support your efforts to, uh, to get these two pieces of property. Kathy, would you like me to do a quick summary real quick, just so everybody knows uh, on these two? <clears throat> so I, I pulled this up. This is uh, all the different potential points uh, for a potential water trail on Canandaigua Lake. Obviously, you've got the city, Kershaw, you've got Atwater Meadows, Kershaw Park, you've got Lagoon Park, existing the Ontario Beach Park, you've got Deep Run existing, obviously Onanda existing down here. Butler Road Schoolhouse is an existing uh, facility that the Can town of Canandaigua operates. <clears throat> so technically, the public hearing this evening is on the possibility of the town acquiring land at uh, what's currently owned by RSM. And so what uh, that would be is <clears throat> the town would be looking to potentially purchase land, uh, approximately 485 feet of lake frontage on Canandaigua Lake uh, that includes um, a piece that would go up and potentially in the future connect to uh, Lakewood Meadows for a trail. Uh, what we're talking about from a, just a very high level uh, summary is uh, the potential with a portion of the land being used for park and a portion of the land being used for open space. Um, additionally, uh, let me just kind of pause with that. Additionally, um, what's just uh, developed and, and obviously there's a resolution on the town board to agenda tonight to set a public hearing on the acquisition of land at Tishner Point. Um, and then uh, that would be having a public hearing on that uh, acquisition uh, for the January 11th meeting. And then that is this parcel. Uh, both parcels are unique. Both parcels uh, definitely provide uh, parks and recreational opportunities as well as open space protection opportunities. Um, but with that, I'll just kind of stop there at a very high level unless Kathy, you or any of the board members have questions. So. I would uh, like a uh, motion to, or I, uh, that, uh, I would like to make a, uh, not a motion, but I would like to move that we really look at this portion of Titchener Point because it was, it's just a fantastic view um, I said the, it was, as you know, uh, at uh, one time, uh, to, uh, Seneca Point, or I'm sorry, uh, I'm a little nervous this morning or this evening. Um, it was, uh, this shows a view looking down the lake. And uh, as you know, or may not know, uh, I wrote a book on this parcel. And uh, we had Paul uh, Kellogg had a piece of it and uh, his uh, portion is now part of the piece that is in, uh, in fact uh, in, in question. And um, it's a, a beautiful home. It's very old, it's probably 1930s or before. Um, and before that, it was, it was uh, uh, owned by uh, uh, Mr. Airy. Um, it was uh, a Boy Scout camp mm -hmm. and then a Girl Scout camp. And <sighs> most of that par portion is right there where, um, uh, right where this parcel is situated. Um, it it makes, makes more land uh, be, besides that, but uh, this is the parcel that to me is the most uh, beneficial. And I would like to see 
I would like to be a part of this process and as well as uh, the RSB parcel, I would uh, appreciate both uh, considerations and I would like to be a, a portion, portion of those uh, parcel, par, par, parcels. Thanks. Thank you very much, Ray. And for those of you who don't know, Ray Henry, he was our town historian and did a wonderful job and I've watched many of your videos. So thank you very much for your input. It means a lot and that you know the history of, of these parcels and the lake, the, the whole lake in Canandaigua. So thank you. Um, anyone else? You're welcome. Kathy, this is Mark McNeil. Okay, Mark, go ahead. Uh, again, going back to the, to the previous uh, portion of land there, Doug, the, the section by German Brothers. We, we spoke about that quite a bit with, with our Parks and Recreation meeting. And, and I, I think a, a huge piece not to be missed, we all talk about the lakefront property and, and the importance of that, but I think that little trail that extends the edge of the, the border also is a huge piece that can't be overlooked. So, um, you know, I just want to make sure that people are aware that, that that's another huge piece of this that really is really important to, yeah, I mean, we, we talk about parks and recreation, but truly we are parks, recreation and trails. So that's, that's an important piece I don't want to miss. Okay, thank you, Mark. Anyone else? Okay, um, we will not be closing this here and we'll be continuing it until- You missed the whole thing. January 11th. Mr. McGavern, did you want to be heard? <laughs> this was the, our hearing is going to be um, extended until January 11th. This pertained to RSM property, but we're extending our hearing, keeping it open until January. So you can be heard then if you want to on, on the Tishner Point property. Is that okay? Okay, thank you. Um, I don't know if you wanted to mute yourself, just, just in case you didn't want us to hear. Um, all right. Um, I don't think we need a motion to continue the hearing, do we? No, I don't think so. All right. Um, so we will move along. Um, we have no more continued hearings, no new public hearings. Um, right now we will move to reports of town officials and department heads. Jim. I've submitted my report for the month of December. Is there any questions? <clears throat> I don't see anyone asking for anything. I don't have anything. Um, Pam, our assessor, I don't know if you're here. I can't see everybody. I guess I could list everybody. Yes, hi, I'm here. Hi. I did submit my report. I have no other comments other than to wish everybody a happy holiday. That's an important comment, thank you. <laughs> Um, we don't have anything from Town Astorian, but thank you, Ray Henry, for, um, I don't think anybody else is here from help. Um, Jean. Oh, there we go. Um, again, I, same with Pam. Um, Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy New Year. Hope everybody has a safe holiday. Um, two things, just want to, in my report, to highlight. Um, tax bills, I do have them. We are sorting through them making sure they are getting to the right person. Um, those will be mailed out on December 31st and we are not taking any payments prior to January 1st. Um, tax bills will be loaded onto the website the last week of December, the, the week of the 28th. Um, the other thing that's pretty exciting is um, people can now renew their dog licenses online as long as the rabies vaccination is up to date. Um, so those are two pretty exciting things, pretty busy, gonna be a couple of busy months here in the town clerk's office, but just wanted to highlight those two things. Okay, thank you. Uh, Doug. Um, I provided you my report and nothing to add, but happy to answer any questions. A lot of moving pieces right now. Merry Christmas, everybody. So. Merry Christmas. Okay, um, I don't think anyone has any questions. I don't see anything, but interrupt me if you want. Um, Supervisor, Deputy Supervisor, the financial reports um, are included. Um, revenue expense report, cash summary report, 
overtime reports from all departments, highway and water. Um, I also included and sent out to our town board and it will be included with the agenda, um, the minutes, um, an update on the Canandaigua LDC. Um, and I'll go over, we have a long meeting this time, but I can go over it a little bit more next time, but I wanted you all to kind of be brought up to speed. So I don't know if anybody has any questions on that, wants to be heard on it, if you had a time to review it. No. All right, thank you. Um, I, I would like to go, I would like to go back to Jim Fletcher though. Okay. And I mean, he's, he's, he's our local guru in this particular area. And that is, <laughs> Jim, will there be a white Christmas? Uh, yes, there'll be a white Christmas, Terry. So there'd be a little low tea, huh? Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. I would much rather sit in my house and uh, just not have to call the guys in. But I got a schedule of who comes in the morning and who will come in the evening so they can be home with their kids. That's good. That's thank good. you very much. And thank you always for everything you do to keep our roads clear always. So You're welcome. Chris, I, as you know, I say when I hear in the morning, I hear that plow truck go by. I'm just wondering, <laughs> hear the scrape of the plow, how much is out there? But <laughs> it's a good way to wake me up. All right. Um, do we have anybody? Uh, Linda, do you want to be give an update from finance? I would just remind everybody that we've spent some time working on our capital assets and we now think we're ready for the audit. Great. Yes. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who worked on that as well. Um, that was, um, I think we got a lot accomplished the last couple of times on that. Uh, planning, Terry. Um, well, I think many of you sat in on the planning meeting, their last one. We had a great presentation by Carla Jordan, the uh, Ontario County Sustainability uh, uh, Director. And um, you're looking forward to uh, what we do from a transfer station standpoint. There'll be more coming at us, I think in January from her statements and throughout all of next year is how we proceed as we uh, you know move toward the uh, 2028 uh, uh, timeframe when uh, there could be some big changes with the landfill. So there, there's quite a bit more to learn there. Okay. We did uh, review our uh, comp comprehensive plan to transportation section and made some recommendations to uh, Eric to be incorporated. Uh, as Jim said uh, in his report, the water project continues to move on the Canandaigua consolidated project. It could be a little bit behind schedule, but not because of any problems, it's more related to a delivery of materials. So, but everything's moving along very well there. So that's pretty much it. All right, thank you, Terry. Um, where am I? Um, environmental, Councilman Simpson. I just wanted to thank Terry for giving me a perfect segue into my, uh, into my point. I would just, in keeping up with composting and recycling and diversion, I would just like to have everybody keep their eyes open because starting in January, there will be scorecards coming out to see so you can see how well you do in each of those areas. Uh, we've been working with uh, Gene on that as well. And Terry has promised me that he's gonna start purchasing prizes for the people who do the best at it. Um, so right. people can just show up at his place and get those prizes. Yep, yep. We'll have a line set up out there like they have at Disney World, you can work your way through. <laughs> That's all that I've got. And a Merry Christmas to everyone. All right, thank you, Jared. Uh, Gary Davis, anything from ordinance? Uh, in ordinance, uh, we got an attachment of our, on our November meeting and uh, that explains what we did then. And uh, the uh, December meeting, uh, those minutes will be coming up for to be included in the agenda in January. And I'd like to wish everyone a happy uh, holidays and Merry Christmas. All right, thank you very much, Gary. All right, um, I, from any of the other boards, um, do we have anyone from planning? I'm just going to go through them quickly. Stop me if there's someone here. ZBA, Environmental Conservation, Citizens Implementation Committee, Parks and Rec. Mark, I don't know if you're still here, if you wanted to. Yep, yep still here. Um, All right. we, we had our meeting there a couple of weeks ago on uh, December 9th. Doug mentioned uh, all the moving pieces. And I think for the most part, I, I think Parks and Rec really has benefited a lot from the, the moving pieces, it seems like that, that Doug was referring to. 
Um, he did join us for our meeting and, and gave us really quite an overview of all the things that are happening um, from the, the, you know, the land there by German Brothers and, and uh, some other things that we talked about. The playground is progressing there at Outhouse West. The town's starting to do some work there and, and that group is, is really very active in, in finishing up that playground and hopes to have a, a kind of a groundbreaking ceremony possibly here if, if the weather would cooperate, you know, in the next uh, few weeks, but they're looking at getting started and, and really having something and in, in started for next summer to really be working on that site with the adaptive playground at, at Outhouse West. So I think that's, that's really the big thing that's happening right now. Um, I mentioned trails earlier, uh, Doug filled us in on, on, uh, the trail connection that they're working by the Civic Center right now. Uh, I stopped and had a great talk with Wayne Bellis over there who was kind of setting up from Outhouse uh, East, I guess it would be called, you know, along the, by the Civic Center roadway. And so things are progressing, you know, from, from a Parks and Rec standpoint, I think there's a lot of things that are happening right now. Um, it seems like everything right now is behind the scenes and, and within the next year or two, there's gonna be a huge explosion of things that that people are going to see and, and really be excited about. So again, I want to I want to thank Doug for keeping all those moving pieces going and keeping you know Parks and Rec updated on what's happening. So and you know a lot of excitement too with with the, the um, things moving forward with Onanda Park and the transfer from the state. I think that's a huge piece and gives us the ability really to to sink our teeth into things at Onanda and not have to worry about you know the the, the likelihood that or the the possibility that the state someday could have said something different to us. So now's the time to move ahead and, and take advantage of a lot of these opportunities. So. Uh, Mark, your committee's going to have a lot of work ahead of you in the coming years. <laughs> it, I'll tell you what, I think we're keeping, you know, Doug might be there, you know, all day and then Parks and Rec keeps him there into the night. So, but. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Anyone else from any of our other committees? I don't think I see anyone else. All right, we'll move along. We have our next privilege of the floor, if anyone would like to be heard. All right, I don't see anyone. Well, as, as long as I'm sitting here and I didn't shut my mic off yet. Um, <laughs> from, my, from my point of view, I, I didn't realize how beautiful that piece, the, the Tishner Point piece was until Doug showed an overhead view. Um, and. It, but to take a look at that and, and to think about the possibility of, of having that as a, as a resource for the town. So um, I, I hope that's what I'm allowed to say during the privilege of the floor time. So, but. Say whatever you like. So I, I just think, you know, lo looking at that and, and I saw it pop up on the agenda and, and it's, it's really, it just looks like such a beautiful spot to, you know, to have open to the, the town of Canandaigua residents. So th that picture right there really said a lot to me, so. What, one more thing to add to the list for Parks and Rec, so. Thank you very much. Um, anyone else? All right. Um, we're going to now move on to resolutions. Oh, wait, there's someone on the chat. Oh, okay. No comments on that. Thank you, Mr. Yarger. Um, all right. We have new resolutions. Uh, resolution number 2020-2020. 256, acknowledging Joyce Markfaller for her years of service to the town as Environmental Conservation Board Chairperson and Environmental Committee Member. Hello. So moved. Second. Second. Um, any discussion? All right, I don't know if Joyce is here, but I just wanna take a quick moment and I will tell her in person as well. I wanna thank her personally. Um, I've learned a lot from her. Um, she may not realize that, but um, and she worked very hard while she while she was here. And during my transition, um, I appreciated her knowledge, and I will let her know privately as well. Um, anyone else? No, she did a great job for us. We're going to be sad to lose her. Yeah, she had a, a wealth of knowledge. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2020-257, accepting the resignation of planning board member, Karen Blasey. I'm moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? 
I just want to take a quick moment to thank um, Karen as well, and I'll thank him as well. Karen was also very welcoming to me um, and helpful when I started, um, and I know she has um, been a great member of the team, so we will miss her and Kim very much. So trying to get a jump on that, so I'm not blabbing for on and on. So any other comment on that? I'll echo yours. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <clears throat> Resolution number 2020-258, acknowledging Environmental Conservation Board member Kim Foreman for her years of service to the town. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, resolution number 2020-259, acceptance of the monthly financial reports. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2020-260, acknowledgement and authorization of budget transfers by town manager. So moved. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Um, resolution number 2020-261, authorization for budget adjustment to Canandaigua Consolidated Water District. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2020-262, authorization to increase appropriated fund balance for re Route 332 drainage district repairs. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2020-263, authorization for town manager to execute into municipal agreement with Ontario County for law enforcement services. So moved. Second. That was very much in unison, gentlemen. That was very good. <laughs> We're all in favor. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2020-264, acknowledgement of estimated reserve fund balances. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2020-266, setting a public hearing on proposal of a law to rescind tax cap override for 2021 yeah. budget. Yeah, I think there's 265, we just missed it. Maybe skip 265. Oh, I'm sorry. Resolution number 2020-265, COVID-19 budget adjustment update 2020 budget, December 2020. Mm -hmm. John Wolf. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, now resolution number 2020-266, setting a public hearing on proposed local law to rescind tax <clears throat> override for 2021 budget. So moved. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2020-267, Authorization for town manager to execute purchase offer for land acquisition for the purposes of town park, public access to lake, town board, seeker intent to declare lead agency. So move. Second. May I make a suggestion that we discuss some potential revisions to be included? Yes. Uh, one, personal property. Two, transfer tax three, naming rights, four, dedication ceremony, five, family memorial, six, minimum price, seven, number of days for appraisal. Okay, Chris, do you want me to amend that resolution to include those? I believe the resolution says um, per town manager to execute the contract uh, as written with those exceptions. Okay. So the fact that we've now discussed them, that I've stated them, that will give the authority for Doug Finch and myself to 
negotiate with the seller's uh, agent and attorney to make the contract uh, a better contract and, and uh, acceptable to the town. Okay. Um, so we had a, a, a motion. Do we have a motion in a second? I think yes. we did. Any further discussion on this? No. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Good luck, gentlemen, on that. Resolution number 2020-268, authorization for town manager to contract for lawn mowing services for 2021. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2020-269, agreement for dog control services. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. So just give me a moment. I'm seeing if we can move these as a block. Okay. Um, if there's no opposition, I would like to move resolutions 2020-270 through 2020-274 as a block. Okay. No objection. All in favor? Okay. Aye. 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 I'm sorry, it should be discussion first. Any yeah. discussion? Getting ahead of myself. Okay. No we, didn't, we didn't have a, didn't a, have a first and a motion yeah, in the second. second. I mean, technically you don't for a block, you just need, you know, yeah. if no one opposes, but I can do that. Um, can I have a motion to, you want a motion to consider as a block? No, no, no. A motion to approve the whole block. Right. I, right. Correct. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the on those as a block? Just Kathy, leave the uh, original with Jean Crispin for the 280, 274 agreement and the town board. When you get the chance, just sign it, please. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank I you. have that here in my office. Okay, I'll Jean. Thanks. By. I'll stop Welcome. by. All right. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I probably would have been shorter if I just did them separately, but sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Resolution number, I'm getting tired of saying 2020. Resolution number 2020-275, seeker determination of non-significance and adoption of a text code amendment to town code chapter 220 that regulates the use of short-term rental units. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution. Yeah. Oh. Kathy, this will be local law number five. Thank you. Welcome. Resolution number 2020-276, setting a public hearing on a text code amendment to town code chapter 220-21 that would allow is it a, allow amendments or regulations? Well, I'll read it as it is. We're going to have a public hearing anyway. To allow amend regulations on swimming pools and seeker intent to declare lead agency. The move. Okay. Okay. Any discussion? Mm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number. 2020-277, 180-day extension for preliminary site plan approval, Uptown Point. To move. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2020-278, authorization to proceed with mixed-use zoning, referral to planning board for advisory report. Townhomes on County Road 28. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2020-279, appointment of full-time clerk to town justice and establishing the standard work day for retirement purposes. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2020-280, appointment of Amanda Van Laken as planning board member. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2020-281, acceptance of MRB Group's proposal for planning services related to Onanda Park improvements and authorization for town manager to execute the agreement. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Getting ahead of myself again. Resolution number 2020-282, renew and authorization of the 2021 priority goals for the Citizens Implementation Committee. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2020-283, Acknowledgement and approval of Environmental Conservation Board's 2020 report and goals. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution number 2020-284, Soil Erosion and Sediment Control Surety for 4789 County Road 16. So moved. moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, now. I think we're going to take these as a block, correct? Resolution, um, if there's no opposition, we'll take resolution numbers 2020-285 through and including 2020-308 as a block. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motions carried. Thank you. I want to catch up with myself here. All right. Um, next, we have approval of town board meeting minutes from November 16th, 2020. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Corrections, deletions, additions? Seeing none or requests for the same. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion to approve the minutes carries. Next, we have payment of the bills. Jane. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yes, the utility abstract dated December 1st, 2020, totaling $18,084.46. For the general fund of $4,970.47, the highway fund of $375.85, capital projects of $5,592.05, and the water districts of $7,146.09. And the abstract dated December 15th, 2020, totaling $1,000,000. $34,419.65, the general fund of $95,600.67, highway fund of $127,148.51, capital projects of $780,445.69, lighting districts of $1,175.92, Water districts $7,545.86 and a trusting agency of $18,503. Oh, I'm muted, sorry. Thank you. Um, can I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Um, next, we have um, our next privilege of the floor. If anyone would like to be heard. Okay. Um, any other business? Seeing none. Our, our next privilege of the floor. <laughs> nope. Um, any further executive session requested? Nope. 
And it uh, looks like we are ready. I'll take, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Everyone have a great and safe holiday. Yes, have a Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry yes. Christmas. Yes. Happy New Year. Better 2021. Oh, yes. 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 See you all in 2021. Merry Christmas. Merry Bye. Christmas. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.